A very important question is, does reverse causality explain the relationship between diet and depression? And the answer appears to be no. Most of the longitudinal studies seem to show that diet quality predicts mental health outcomes, but mental health at baseline does not have a predictive capacity in terms of subsequent diet. Uh, that's what most of the evidence seems to show. Um, you heard a little bit earlier about the microbiome. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the microbiome. So Anne was talking a bit about it. Um, and one of the questions that we're really interested in is depression's an inflammatory disease, but we're really interested in knowing where the inflammation comes from. So it's a disease associated with low-grade inflammation, activation of cell-mediated immunity, and as well as activation of the compensatory anti-inflammatory reflex system. So this is core to depression. And one of the major areas that inflammation comes from in depression is from diet. So I mentioned that one of the things you can do is look at the relationship between diet and inflammation. And you can, uh, you can classify diet as a pro or anti-inflammatory dietary pattern. And this data is really quite robust. So if you look at the top, you can see uh, the best quiet diet quality is associated with the lowest levels of C-reactive protein. In a beautifully dose-dependent way, the higher your, your, your CRP rises with declining diet quality. The same is true of interleukin-6, and the same is true of C-reactive protein. So I think this idea of a dietary uh, inflammatory index really is upheld by the uh, evidence linking diet and inflammation. So a, a really interesting study looked at the relationship between dietary patterns and depressive symptoms over time. And what they found in the study of uh, adults over 65 is that dietary patterns were strongly predictive of depression over time and not confounded by other measures of socioeconomic status or other health behaviors. Diet quality also affects brain structure. Um, so this is a really interesting study, a longitudinal study following people over a period of five years broke it up into a poor diet group, an average diet group, and a good diet group. And what, what you can see is that over time, your hippocampal volume is reducing in all three groups. But in the good gr diet group, the progression is much reduced across all waves. So uh, the progressive brain changes that you see with aging are ameliorated, at least to some extent, by a good quality diet. Gut bacteria are now the hottest new topic in medicine. Doesn't matter whether you're interested in atopy, psychiatry, uh, rheumatology, uh, everyone's into the microbiome now. And we now are beginning to understand that one of the important mediators of the relationship between diet quality and the brain is the microbiome. And the gut is now a critical and f uh, area of feverish interest in the whole field. So we know that roughly 100 trillion microbes live on us and in us. 50% of all our cells are microbial. And 99.5% of our genetic material is microbial. Uh, we know that gut, gut mi uh, micro uh, microbiota influence metabolism and body weight, the immune system. And there's now good evidence that gut, mi gut microbiota influence mood and behavior as well. So, as I said, we know that there are a number of biological pathways that are dysregulated in depression, including oxidative stress and inflammation, uh, metabolic parameters like um, insulin resistance, the metabolic syndrome, uh, adipokines, the HPA axis and cortisone, and the neurotransmitters that we all know and love. And without going into too much detail, every one of these is influenced by the gut microbiome. Um, the other thing that's really important to know is that the single most important factor influencing the gut microbiome, uh, mental health, and, uh, sorry, the most important factor influencing the gut microbiome is diet. Diet is the single critical overwhelming operative factor in influencing uh, the composition of the gut microbiome and, and working on this critical mediating factor for mood. And diet explains 57% of the total variation in gut microbiota Genetics accounts for no more than 12%. So we now think that the gut microbiome is a really key pathway linking diet to mental disorders. Uh, it's an area of feverish interest. There's a lot of interest in 
altering the gut mi microbiome as a way to treat depression. And this is something that is an, an active area of investigation in our team. We're beginning, we're planning the first, uh, one of the first trials on treating depression by altering the gut microbiota. We're looking at fecal microbial transplants as a treatment for depression. Uh, all I can say is watch the space. We don't know whether it'll work or not, but lots of people are interested in this. Uh, and I think in five years' time, we're going to have an explosion of new of data. Mm -hmm.